Hello coders, welcome to episode 194 of the How to Code Well podcast. We are talking about TypeScript today and when you shouldn't use TypeScript in your projects. Before we get into that, I want to just talk about some comments that were made against the last episode about artificial intelligence and the things that were promised with web development that haven't happened yet. Some really nice comments. Wineblood says that saying that AI will replace developers is like saying we don't need cooks anymore before we can all buy toasters and a microwave. Uh, great to see you back here. Hope there's more HTCW videos coming. Adelysium1, I think that's the name. Welcome back, Peter. Thanks for sharing your valuable thoughts and helpful insights. And Leco 2023 writes, companies don't fire developers solely due to AI, but they hire fewer juniors. And if these people don't get a chance uh, to get into the industry, they won't become the future seniors. That's a valid point, I guess. And this will likely to only accelerate as the tool chain around AI matures. As to switching to different technologies to get projects, jobs, when there aren't many in your niche at the moment, sure, broadening your perspective is great. Maybe you'll even find parts in the ecosystem which are missing in your niche and could be provided as a service. He goes on to say, but it takes time to learn about the whole ecosystem around technology and you won't start with a pro any proprietary tools. One usually creates to get more work done. Also, I've been tracking close to 100,000 projects across different sites now over the last year and mapping those against around 600 languages, libraries and frameworks. There are just too many different technologies out there and too many combinations to find that one combination that is sure to provide a steady stream of projects for a few years. Long-term greenfield projects are also very rare these days, that's true. And as long as we constantly add new languages, libraries, frameworks to the system that essentially uh, do the same thing as the others, we will simply increase this mess for ourselves. It's a unique struggle of developers creating tools that make work life easier for others whilst adding more and more technologies that make work life harder for us. So let's pull that comment apart a little bit because there's quite a lot involved there. First of all, companies don't fire developers solely due to AI. So I haven't seen any of this myself, so I agree with that point, but they hire fewer juniors. I, I, I believe that there is fewer juniors being, being hired, sure, but I don't think that that is solely because of AI. There, This could be a number of reasons. Um, people just want seniors and they want long list of experience, uh, years worth of experience in a whole manner of different technologies. And it's very difficult for juniors to get into. <laughs> it's very difficult to get into. That was a, someone's just subscribed. Woo! <laughs> it's very difficult to get into the industry as a junior when you only have, say, a, a, a year or so's worth of experience. This is why things like boot camps and courses and creating your own portfolios and doing freelance work on the side as you're learning is, is a great way to gain that experience. Okay. As to switching to different technologies to get projects, jobs, when they aren't there aren't many uh, in your niche at the moment, sure, broadening your perspective is great. Maybe you'll even find parts in the ecosystem which are missing in your niche. It's not a great time to niche down at the minute. It's great to broaden your horizons and look for different technologies that you can perhaps uh, jump in and out of and learn. So for example, if you're a PHP developer, maybe take a look at Python. If you're a if you're a Symfony developer, maybe take a look at Laravel. Things that aren't that too far away, right? Than what it is that you're working on. If you're a WordPress dev, perhaps take a look at another content management system to uh, to see and work out what your the job market is doing, where you are. Go with that those technologies if if you see a shift in all of that stuff. A valid point that LACO uh, mentions here is that in order to learn this stuff, there is a high learning curve and it does take time to do that. This is why really uh, developers need to have their own side projects, which aren't necessarily directly related to the technologies that they're working on on their day to day, but a side project on some technology that they perhaps want to learn and then build from, as I said, 
uh, side projects, freelance projects, that kind of stuff. I appreciate that it, it, that is difficult to do, time constraints and whatnot, but it, it is just something that we have to do. And we've had to do that for years. It, this hasn't just become an AI thing. I don't see this being related to AI at all. I also agree that long-term greenfield projects are very rare. But again, that's always been the case. To have a project that doesn't use any particular framework or library is very rare. I mean, even JavaScript now, every JavaScript project I've worked on has some form of build step that is, is required. So you need to learn the build tools like uh, Gulp, Bower, for legacy projects, of course, uh, NPM, TypeScript, all of that stuff. We'll get onto that in a minute. So yeah, I do agree that it is a rarity to get Greenfield projects in. So some great comments there. Thank you very much for those. And if you've got any comments on, or suggestions or disagreements on the things that I do uh, talk about, please put them down in the comments and let's have a discussion on that. TypeScript has taken over JavaScript. It is a subset of JS and it is fantastic because it forces us to write good JavaScript, right? That's how it's been sold to us. And big, big companies use TypeScript all over the place. And TypeScript has been involved in a lot of the projects that I've played with over the years. It, it's also pushed the language forward. So there were th things in TypeScript that weren't around in just general JavaScript, but now JavaScript has improved. We've now got things like classes and whatnot that uh, TypeScript allowed us to, to have, but now we have those in JS. I think it's a good time to reevaluate TypeScript. Um, some companies are actually not using TypeScript now. They've publicly announced that TypeScript isn't what they're going to be doing. And I think it's a good time to uh, address a couple of reasons why perhaps developers shouldn't use TypeScript in their projects anymore. So the first one is that when you're first learning JavaScript, TypeScript has a very big learning curve. It's not JavaScript, it's a subset of JavaScript, right? So you need to not only know JavaScript first, and then you need to learn why you need TypeScript. You also need to learn how to install TypeScript and use TypeScript with your editors, with your build compilation. So it's an extra step, it's an extra level of complexity. If you are new to web development, I would, I would not focus on TypeScript straight away. I would consider learning JavaScript first. Once you're comfortable with that, and once you realize why TypeScript is in use, why people use it, the deficiencies of JavaScript and what TypeScript does to change all of that or improve all of that, then you jump on. A lot of people use tools even if they don't need to use those tools. And I think that every project you need to evaluate the project that you're on. Do I actually need to use this tool or am I just following a trend? And as a junior developer, I would suggest that you not focus on unnecessary complexity within your workflow. This kind of boils into the second point, which is TypeScript adds extra complexity, extra code to maintain, such as types and interfaces and whatnot. Uh, this adds an extra overhead uh, for your project. So if it's just you working on your project, then you have to consider the time in which it takes to maintain the TypeScript, maintain the types, test those out. Are you just appeasing the IDE, <laughs> making sure that you don't have any red squiggly lines? It might be, you might be feeding into perhaps your, uh, if, if you've got like a need, a desire to have clean, clean code, but it's actually not progressing the project forward. Be careful with that trap. Be care I, I've been there, you know, especially with tests and stuff. Let's test all the things, even though perhaps all the things isn't a necessary thing to test, right? So be careful. TypeScript is one of those traps that you can get into just to make your code as conformative as possible for every possible situation. Um, and if it's just you working on this project, then really you're not, creating any rules for any other developers. So it's a TypeScript is great when you are in a team, right? Because you are saying that these are the rules, these are the types that we must conform to. We being the team must conform to. But if you're on your own, really you're setting rules up for yourself. 
which is fine, I guess, in a way, if you've got time to maintain that and also build in that build step as well, right? So that means that you have to have an extra step before you do the deployment. It's a, a dependency that you need to keep uh, and maintain. So it's just an, another thing. If you don't already have a build step, then really, I don't know if TypeScript is for you, to be honest, because you need to add all of that extra pack baggage just to have TypeScript. The next one is, well, the last one, I suppose, is if you're building an open source project. Now, this is more specific to projects that are shared across multiple organizations and teams uh, or open source. If you've got a project that is on NPM that other people use, then I would I would be very cautious over using TypeScript. The reason being is that TypeScript is not the only thing to deal with types in your code. There are other tools, Flow, for example. What you're doing is you're saying, hey, this is a required dependency for your project and, it, and your project may not use TypeScript. <laughs> So you are in, you're, you're being very opinionated. You're enforcing that dependency upon the people who use your open source projects. So I would be very cautious. When I look at open source projects, I look at what is included or what I need to also include, grab that as a dependency. And if TypeScript's in there, then perhaps I won't be using it if my project doesn't use TypeScript. However, if you're using TypeScript to develop that open source project, and TypeScript doesn't become the dependency of the result of that project, then that's okay, right? If you're working with a bunch of contributors, right, and you're all using TypeScript, then that's cool to build that open source project. Just don't enforce that against the people who use that open source project. Don't say, in order for you to, to download this package, you also need to download TypeScript. Make sure that it's in your required dev. Don't put it as a, as a primary requirement of that package. So like with other tools, TypeScript is not a tool that every project needs to have. Your build tools, your libraries, your frameworks that you use should complement the project and every project is different and therefore every tool is not going to be used for every project. Be careful when you look at these big companies that use TypeScript all over the place. You're not the big company, maybe maybe you are, but the chances are you're not as big as them, right? You don't have the overheads, you don't have the R&D budget, you don't have the time to, to deal with all of this. And you never had a build step, build step perhaps previously. So you need to consider that you're not as big as these huge companies that use TypeScript left, right and center and try and look at your tool set, your tool chain and make sure that it's relevant for the project that you're on. This isn't just a, a TypeScript thing. This is for every tool that you use. There we go. Happy coding, everybody. Lots of love. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.